my name is Taylor Louderman. Some people know me better as my name is Regina George. I played Regina George in Mean Girls on Broadway, written by Tina Fey. Before that, I was in Kinky Boots, and before that, I was in Bring It On the Musical on Broadway. I was also in Peter Pan Live, and I've been back to my hometown, St. Louis, Missouri, to perform at the Muni a few times. I'm originally from a town called Bourbon, Missouri, where the cattle population exceeds the human population. Today, I'm going to teach you about performing the song. Yeah! I'm not talking about like concert performing the song. I'm talking about musical theater performing the song. You know what I'm saying? So first things first, always be off book. Memorize your lyrics and memorize your notes. Note on memorization. It helps to take it one phrase at a time. Break it down, sing it, and then go back and sing that phrase plus the second phrase. And if you mess up, Go back, start again, and then keep adding on in little tiny increments. It just helps your brain swallow it all a little bit better. Also, a trick, sleep. So, for example, I may go, okay, do a deer, a female deer. Okay, <clears throat> do a deer, a female deer. Great, great, got it, got it. Ray, a drop of golden sun. Okay, okay. Do a deer, a female deer. Ray, a drop of golden sun. You get it. Choosing material for auditions. Make sure you choose a song that is within your vocal range. Pay attention to how high you can sing and how low you can go. Make sure the song you're choosing is really easily within your range, because let me just tell you, you're gonna get nervous. Make sure the song is within your age range. If you're 15 years old, don't choose a song that talks about being a mom of five. <laughs> Try to stay away from songs that are overdone. The auditors are seeing tons of people all day long. It's really gonna help you and serve you if you're not singing the same song as a lot of other people. Plus, it shows that you've done some research. You know your stuff. Make sure your music is clearly marked. That accompanist can really make or break you. So if you have an intro, clearly mark it and say intro. I'll even highlight it. And then at the end, I say thank you. Gratitude is key. A lot of times when I get nervous, I overlook those little things that can be so important. <sighs> Let's talk about nerves. <sighs> we all have them. I've gone through major spells of stage fright. It's scary and it gets in the way of the number one thing, having fun. <laughs> but let's think about this. Stage fright is really fear plus excitement. Without excitement, you'd only have fear. Then why would you ever get on stage in the first place? We just wanna make sure those two elements are balanced. We need a little bit of fear because it's gonna make us work hard, it's gonna motivate us to practice and rehearse, but we also need the excitement Oh, so we can show up and rock it. Uh, and a lot of times, especially right before you walk through that door, the fear gets so big. Oh, yeah! One thing I do is just talk to myself. It's not life or death. I'm here to tell a story and communicate and inspire my audience. Don't let the fear be the only story you tell yourself. Really imagine things going well. <gasps> it's super powerful. The brain is way more powerful than you think. I do power poses too. The standing like this for a long time, or even like this, but some people may think that's a bit silly in the audition room, waiting room. If you stand like that for two minutes, your body and your mind will discover, oh, everything's okay, we're fine. There's not a big lion over there waiting to attack us. All right, now I'm gonna tell you some tools that always work for me. Every single song, every single story I tell, these three questions are always gonna set you up for success. Ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, let's go. Oh. Number one. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? This is your objective. Nearly all human behavior is motivated. Every single thing we do, okay? Sometimes the motivation is real strong and sometimes it's just These like, are my um, tools that apply to, go get to any song. We don't any just do things for no reason. Scene. And human all the time that is highly right? motivated makes for great TV and entertainment. Am I right? I mean, how often are we watching a movie or a TV show or theater and the character just goes and does something for no reason at all and it doesn't pertain to the plot? Hardly yet. I can't think of one. Our stories show folks in a high stake situation. It's just more entertaining. So, your want better be strong. As high stakes as you can get them. The audience wants to go on a ride. A roller coaster ride. So let's give it to them. <laughs> Number two. Numero dos. Numero dos. Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? Okay, you want this person, this thing higher power, whatever it is, to be the one thing that has the most amount of power to give you what you want. Ooh. Sometimes it's you. I mean, I don't know about you, but I talk to myself all day long in my head or people would think I'm crazy. And a lot of times I get in my own way and consider that it could morph from one person to 
a group of people or society or a higher power. My professor in college used to tape a teddy bear to the wall so that we could really visualize eyes and nose and a mouth, like really see a person that we're interacting with. It's so, so important that you get specific and use your imagination. Sometimes it's helpful to choreograph their reactions so that you can naturally react to them. We want it to feel like real life. It's so important that we can achieve that sense of flow where we're not thinking about, oh, if I do this with my arm, it'll get my point across a little bit more. That is all coming out of us as a product of our motivation, of our want from whoever we're talking to. Number three. 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 The moment before. The moment before! This helps you to catapult into the story. Set up your surroundings, it helps you get specific. Also helps you go from slating into the song so organically and beautifully. For example, <clears throat> my name is Taylor and I'm gonna be singing Children Will Listen from, oh my gosh, Into the Woods. <laughs> Thank you, okay, okay. Careful the things you say. <sighs> It also helps you access your imagination quicker. And that imagination, man, it is the queen. Having a big imagination, that's the name of the game. It helps you start storytelling as soon as you hear music coming from the accompanist or the computer, whatever your device is that's playing the music. The things I just talked about, those three questions, you can apply those to every story no matter what. Now I'm gonna tell you about some ideas to consider. Think of singing like speaking on pitch. Sometimes it's a great exercise to not sing your lyrics, just speak them as if they were a monologue, to really hear them from a different perspective. When we're singing, oftentimes I see singers strain or show tension, maybe in their forehead or in their neck, or even in their hands, and that gets in the way of the storytelling, especially when we get to those high notes, midnight, not a sound on the pavement. You see it here in my eyebrows, in my forehead, in my neck. It's like our other muscles in our body wants to kick in and help us out. And that's so sweet of them. We don't need their help. Now, no longer is the audience hearing a story, but they're watching somebody do vocal acrobats. I don't know about you, but that's a lot of pressure to show up to be judged just for your vocal abilities. And don't get me wrong, that can be really impressive. But what I show up for is to go on that journey with you, to hear that story and musicalize it. Oh, it's beautiful when it's done well. Not to mention, when I'm in the audience and I see somebody is straining or nervous, I start to worry for them. I start to feel their pain as well. And then I'm not paying attention to the story at all. I'm like, you can do it, you can get through this. Really practice and rehearse those notes. Get them to where they're comfortable in your body. Just like kicking a soccer ball becomes second nature. So that when you show up for the performance, you can really focus on the story. The moon lost her memory. When I marry the story with the singing, sometimes my emotions help me reach those notes even easier. So get into it. Uh, sometimes our nerves manifest themselves in ways like swaying to the music, fidgeting, playing with our clothes. Sometimes people blink a lot. Sometimes people get a dry mouth. Those nerves can be different for everybody. But remember, they're nerves, they're not you. It's important that you're aware of them so you know how to fix them. Thank the nerves for being there, trying to support you. Let them go on the journey with you. Just don't let them drive the ship. You can do it! Okay, another thing. Think about how you behave in real life when you want something. I'm engaged in eye contact. I'm usually leaning in. I'm giving them my full attention. And usually, I'm not planning what my face is gonna look like or my hands are gonna be doing in those moments. All of that is flowing out of me naturally and organically in an effort to get what I want. What I am focusing on is their facial expression and their eyes. Eyes are the main event where the most communication is happening. One thing I've discovered that usually adds a lot to the storytelling is the element of discovery. As an audience member, you really wanna feel like a fly on the wall. You wanna go on this journey with the character. You don't wanna feel like you're hearing a retelling of the story five days later. I mean, we wanna be in the room where it happens, right? We wanna witness things firsthand. I wanna watch that person in the privacy of their own bedroom combusting or breaking down about it. I wanna feel it with them and go on that roller coaster ride. So one trick in accomplishing that is injecting an element of discovery. It can make the audience feel like these ideas and these thoughts are popping into your head right here, right now. Like you're solving the problem in front of them with them. Strolling along till the, what's that word again? Couple other tricks. For some reason, we as human beings associate hope and dreams with the clouds, the sky. So if your character or your lyrics are talking about hope or dreaming, pitch your focus a little bit higher. 
take it to the clouds, make it global, bring the whole world in. On the flip side, when humans are sad, we tend to associate it with the ground. Down, pitch your focus a little bit lower when you're singing about being sad. Now, I wouldn't go too low to the ground because like I said, the main communication is happening right here. Like here. You're still able to participate. Taking steps in any which direction. I mean, really read the room. If you have a huge room, you probably have more permission to move around. But think about what is communicated when somebody takes a step backwards. No business like show business like no business I know. Isn't that wild? These forward and backward movements are just so bold when you're singing a song that's only two or three minutes long. I generally like to say keep your forward movement to about two steps for the whole song and try to place them on a turn in the music. A good example would be when there's a key change. Ooh, it's really taking you to that next step. <gasps> I really wouldn't take a step backwards unless your lyrics are clearly about defeat and feeling small. Or if you've taken too many steps forward and you're right on top of the auditors. Oh, I almost forgot. When you're in the audition room, you don't make the auditors, the people behind the table, feel like they're your scene partner. I mean, I would feel like, ooh, I have to respond. I have to engage. And we don't want to put them in that situation. Ah, another good rule of thumb. Start small, start simple. Give yourself somewhere to go. Every story has a beginning, middle, and end, and a climax. Well, we need to do that with our songs, or even our 16 bars. We really want to show a complete story. Let it grow, evolve into something big, exciting. Okay, let's talk about vulnerability. Raise your hand if you know who Brene Brown is. I do, I do, I do. She'll be the first to tell you that how we connect with other people is by being vulnerable. So you gotta show up with an open heart. We have to let our audience in, show them who we are way deep down so that they can project themselves onto us and ride that wave with us. One way to do that to make sure your stakes are really high. Another great concept is to think about your music as a beautiful roadmap. Match the energy. Pay attention to when the music shifts and you hear a slightly different arrangement. It gives you a different feeling. The music swells and the notes are getting bigger and typically that's gonna mean you're gonna have a high note coming up and the stakes are gonna grow and your emotions are gonna get stronger and stronger until you hit the note. Think about the bridge as a last stitch effort to get what you want. You might drop out, you might back off a little bit and try a new tactic that is just heartfelt. You got it, you got this. All right, let me say one thing about riffing, okay? It's cool, it's fun, it's really hip and trendy. Those riffs better be supported by the story. In real life, when I'm gonna riff, it's usually because I don't have words for what just happened. If I just stub my toe, I might say, oh, oh. <laughs> So those stakes have to be high, those emotions have to be turned up all the way because we don't have words for how we're feeling. We don't know how else to express it. One cool thing that I think helped me achieve my dreams was just being curious and paying attention to how I react in certain situations and watching other people too. I'll pay attention to little things like body language and I won't just say, hmm, that made me feel X, Y, Z. I'll go a step further and really break down what they did that made me feel that way. Usually, it's less about what they said and how they said it. And now, some encouraging words from yours truly. Trust your instincts. You communicate all day long, unless you're a hermit in your closet. I don't, I don't know. And you've probably taken a stab at telling a few stories among your peers or your family. So I bet if you listened to yourself and trusted your instincts, it could take you pretty far. Then, one of the best things you can do is be yourself. I know that's cheesy and a lot of people say it, but really, I mean, think about it. We are human beings that are made up of, yes, genes, but also experiences. And that recipe is so unique. Nobody with your same genes has gone through all the same experiences that you have. So you have a perspective that nobody else has. That is unique, that is special, that is worth hearing. So trust that you are enough. Trust that the way you feel about certain situation is enough and likely, other people are gonna feel the same way and therefore your storytelling can make a huge difference for somebody out there. Remember, feelings are human and universal and music is too. Humans need stories. It's how we connect. It's how we take care of each other. Hearing stories can be so therapeutic for most people. Even you. If you can find songs that make your heart sing, then suddenly you're working hard, having fun, and getting a little bit of therapy. Sometimes using experiences that you've had in your own life can help you really step into the shoes of the character. The only time that can be dangerous is if you're telling a really heavy, sad story every night on stage 
and have trouble leaving it at the door when you walk out the stage door. It can just mean that you leave work feeling down and out and that can trickle into a lot of other people's lives too. Don't be afraid to fail. That's often how we learn. Keep exploring and keep showing up as long as you love it. That's all I've got for you guys. I'm really excited to see some of your stuff and I can't wait to answer more questions that you might have. Remember, art is relative. So what one person loves, another person might hate and that's okay. That's part of it. It's not math or science, so there's not one way to do it. I collected a lot of tools from a lot of different teachers and I put them in my toolbox. And sometimes I use this tool and sometimes I use this tool. And don't forget to celebrate small wins. I'm so excited for you guys. Ah, you're gonna be great. Love to you all. Thanks for listening. <laughs>